Good Sunday morning, church. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Thank you, Jean, for this very seasonal mask. And also, uh, Happy Chinese New Year as well. Do you know, it's a privilege to come before the Lord to worship. And sometimes we can take that for granted, but today, let's appreciate that God's mercy is for those who fear him, and that God gives grace to the humble. Our call to worship uh, comes from Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Our opening song, Jesus, Thou Joy of Loving Hearts. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we worship you, the Almighty God, whose glory fills the heavens and is revealed in the beauty of the universe, whose greatness no one can compare, whose power is above all others, and whose compassion has been given to us through your Son, Jesus. Thank you for being gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, let your love transform our lives. Forgive us when we refuse your love for us, when we have no need of your forgiveness, when we depend only on ourselves, and when we are too busy to be with you. Teach us to draw near to you and to your grace. Renew us in your love. Thank you for teaching us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. We're thankful for Judy, Lynn, and Matthias, their ministry with us, and we turn to the youth message and anthem. Welcome to the youth message portion of the service. Today is Valentine's Day. Earlier this week, I mailed out Valentine's Day packages to all of our church school families, and I'm hoping that you have that package close by because it has two activities in it, one that we're gonna do together right now and one for you to do with your family later today. So go get that package and we're gonna walk through an activity together. Now when you find your package, the first thing you're gonna see is a set of instructions for today. And right behind that set of instructions is a red heart. Now there's lots of red hearts in this package. You want the one that looks tall and thin like this one. You're gonna cut that heart out so that it looks like this. And then I want you to think about a time when maybe you felt a little bit down or when you felt a little bit sad. And you'll notice on your heart that there's a square box in the middle and I want you to write down what made you feel down, what made you feel sad. Now, if you're not so good with words and spelling or writing just yet, then just draw a picture in the center. Now for my heart, I just wrote the word sad so that you would have an example of what it looks like. Now we're going to read from the Bible from Psalm 86 and we're going to read verses 6 and 7. It reads like this. Please listen, Lord. Always answer my prayer for help. When I'm in trouble, I pray knowing that you will listen. Well, that tells us that when we feel down or when we feel sad, we can always count on God to listen to us. So, the next time you feel that way, I really want to encourage you to talk to God and to talk about how you're feeling. So, let's go back to our hearts and let's fold one side in just to help us remember that. Whenever we feel sad or we feel down, we can always talk to God. Now, let's read from Psalm 86, verses 11 and 13. And they say, Teach me to follow you, and I will obey your truth. Always keep me faithful. With all my heart, I thank you. I praise you, Lord God. Your love for me is so great that you protected me from death and the grave. Here we learn that God is always listening and he's ready to help us. He's ready to protect us and all we have to do is ask. So let's take our hearts and let's fold the other side remembering that God is always with us and he's ready to help whenever we ask. Now our next reading is still from Psalm 86 and it's a little bit longer it comes from verses 1 to 5 and it reads like this please listen Lord and answer my prayer I am poor and helpless protect me and save me because you are my God I am your faithful servant and I trust you be kind to me I pray to you all day make my heart glad I serve you and my prayer is sincere you willingly, you willingly forgive, and your love is always there for those who pray to you. Well, this passage tells us that God is always with us. He's always listening. He's always offering his forgiveness and love. So let's go back to our hearts and let's fold down this top part here, remembering how God is always listening, always forgiving, always loving. So our hearts look a little like this right now. 
we can always talk to God. And it can be a short chat or it can be a long conversation. But no matter what, God will always wrap whatever we're talking to him about in his love, like we wrap ourselves up on a cold day in a warm blanket. So now let's fold this last bottom portion towards the middle. And if you have any stickers, you can put a sticker just to keep it closed. Everyone is going to have a sad time. Everyone is going to have a sad moment or a time when they feel a little bit low. It happened in the Bible times, it still happens today, and it's going to happen in the future. But God has been, is, and will continue to be with us to listen, to help us, and to wrap our sad moments in his love just like our paper hearts wrapped the sad moments in our lives. February 14th is the day that we celebrate uh, love and friendships, but let's also take a moment to remember God's love for us because his love is always and forever. Until next week, God remembers you, God hears your prayers, and God loves you very much. This is Building Faith at Home, the video series for parents, grandparents, guardians, and people of influence in the lives of the children and youth at St. Andrews. Today's Building Faith at Home is all about crafts and relationships, and that's because it's Valentine's Day! Earlier this week, I mailed out chocolate-free Valentine's Day packages to all of our church school families and each envelope contained two special activities. The first one, I hope you just did with me during the youth message, and the second one is one for you to do with your family a little bit later today. Now, that activity contains a couple of things. So the first thing you're gonna find is a set of instructions, and that's gonna lead you through this activity. The second thing you're going to find is red hearts and pink hearts on cardstock. Now you're going to get in just enough for the number of people that are in your family. So pick the color you want to use. I chose red. And cut your heart out. And once you've cut your heart out, you're going to start to decorate your heart. Now maybe you're going to decorate your heart with more hearts. Maybe you're going to put a bunch of stickers on your heart or maybe you have craft supplies and you're going to fill your heart with um, ribbons and glitter and pom-poms. Anything that you can glue on your heart to make it look seasonal is what you want to do to this heart. Now when your heart is all decorated, you're going to exchange your heart with your family members and you're going to ask them to write on your heart all of the things that they love about you and on their heart you're going to write all of the things that you love about them. So an example would be I would take Keegan's heart and I would write all of the things that I love about Keegan and an example might be I love how passionate he is when he finds something that he truly enjoys. And if I was going to write on Shane's heart, I might write how much I love his cooking when he cooks dinner for us sometimes during the week. And if the, you aren't able to use words to write what you love about your family members, you can always draw a picture instead of using words. So I might draw a picture of like, burgers and put it on Shane's and I might draw pictures of Lego blocks and put it on Keegan's. As a family when you're finished this activity it is a great time to pray together and to give thanks to God for all of your family members and to ask for God's love and to ask him to strengthen your relationships. You can take your decorated hearts and you can put them on display and you can ask your family members to continue to write things that they love about you over the next couple of weeks. And this is just a really simple and easy example 
of how family time can come together and you can have God as your center point. So until next week, your family is unique and so is your family's faith building experience. Scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. Let's hear the word of the Lord. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, 
but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's take this time to pray. Lord, let your word transform our lives. Allow your word to sink into our hearts and make it genuine and real and your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, happy Valentine's Day. Perhaps this year, instead of sending out cards like, will you be my Valentine? Perhaps we should send out, will you be my quarantine? That was a joke. I guess since we're all in quarantine, we could call that an inside joke. Uh, for Valentine's Day, a husband bought a world map and gave his wife a dart and said, throw this and wherever it lands, that's where I'm taking you when this pandemic ends. As it turns out, they plan to spend two weeks behind the refrigerator. I guess that's kind of like how Things are going this past year. You know, for Valentine's Day, let's not let our expectations get the better of us. And let's not allow social convention or what other people think to cause us to feel unfulfilled. Valentine's Day doesn't mean that you have to have a significant other or you have to do something special today. It's just another day, and it's a social convention. So if you're single, find contentment in all that God has blessed with, including friends and family. Uh, if you're married, find contentment with your partner. Yes, try to do that. Remember, Christian marriage isn't about making me happy and making my spouse like me. Uh, it's about helping my partner be the very best person that they can be in Christ. It's to serve and to give and help the other. Well, one last uh, joke for you on Valentine's Day. A man saw his neighbor talking to her cat. She was telling the cat how important she was and how much she loved her. It was obviously obvious that she thought the cat understood this uh, conversation, like they were kind of speaking back and forth. The man chuckled and he went back home and told his dog and they laughed about it too. Wherever you are and with whoever is part of your friends and family, including your pets, May we be thankful and appreciate our friendships as God's blessings. Our scripture reading today can help us in our relationships, and it seemed to be 
a favorite for Eric Little. Just to recap a bit, in case you have come to this sermon series uh, recently, Eric Little was a gold medal winner for the uh, 1924 Paris Olympics for Great Britain. He was known as the Flying Scotsman and a man of character and faith and the subject of the movie Chariots of Fire. The year after the Olympics, he became a missionary to China with the London Mission Society. There are many books written about Eric Little, but there's only one book that was published and written by him, and it's called The Disciplines of the Christian Life. And in this book, he wanted to encourage Christians to grow in their faith and to live by their convictions. And he hoped that his readers would grow in their personal devotion to God and, and develop this habit of reading the Bible daily and to find scripture to be a source of strength for their lives. His topics were practical for everyday life, including 1 Corinthians 13, which is mentioned more than once in his book. And he applied this passage to uh, the Christian home and family relationships and friendships and our call to love one another or to be loving. 1 Corinthians 13 is a beautiful passage about love and it's written to the church in the city of Corinth. Now Corinth itself was known as a city of love. It was home to the temple Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Uh, this was a different kind of love, though it was a worldly love, and those worldly influences, including sexual immorality and ending up with infighting and division, were affecting and causing problems in the church. So the Apostle Paul reminded them in the chapter previous uh, to 13 that they were to be united in Jesus Christ and not divided and that they were to work together for the common good, not to work against one another, and that they were to use their spiritual gifts in coordination with one another, not in competition. The key to all of this was to do these things with the motive of love. In the first three verses of chapter 13, Paul provides this beautiful, this dramatic wording about the importance of love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have all prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is the key to being spiritual, to striving after knowledge, to having a bold faith and amazing acts of sacrifice. These should be wonderful things in and of themselves and to be admired, but they are nothing without love. The motive of love makes our actions valuable and worthwhile and gives them life and meaning. Little writes, love is the essential element in the Christian home. Efficiency, cleanliness, luxury cannot make up for the lack of love. Little speaks about the source of love as coming from God. God is love is the most complete statement of what God is like. Love is part of every other attribute of God. I cannot prove that God is love. Gradually, though, as we meditate on it and allow its implications to be put into practice, life finds new meaning and purpose. Work has a new incentive. Life's tragedies are faced with a new spirit. People take on a new attractiveness. We begin to see in them unsuspected beauty of character and new possibilities. Love is the key that brings sense and meaning into the world. 
And after all, is not this the greatest proof that it is true? Where love is, God is. I see it, I feel it, I know it. We love because God first loved us. Little also gives an illustration about a mountain lake of God's love, this refreshing water, and then the gift of God's Son, Jesus, is the river that flows from this lake, and our faith is like a jug or pitcher that draws uh, soul-reviving, thirst-quenching, life-giving drafts from this river of love and life. The next four verses in 1 Corinthians 13 give a definition of what love is and what love isn't. And the word used here is, for Greek, is the word agape, which means unconditional love. So this is a love that isn't concerned about self, but only concerned about the highest good for another. It's love that is willing to sacrifice. So in this sense, it's the love that God has demonstrated and revealed in his son, Jesus, God's sacrifice for us. Let's take a look at how love is defined in our passage and then uh, let me offer Eric Little's comments from his book. So in verse four, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious, or boastful, or arrogant, or rude. This is a love that puts up with or endures the weakness, ignorance, errors, and pettiness of the children of God, and the malice and wickedness of the world. It's a love that is ready to go out of its way to help, to reduce people's burdens willingly, and joyfully sharing their sorrows and hardships. This is a love that recognizes that every gift and talent comes from God. It is nothing to boast of but the goodness of God. It is never willingly offensive but polite and courteous. In verse 5, love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. So this is a love that doesn't plan for itself and seek to impose its own point of view or its own way or its plan on others. Outward provocations will constantly occur, but love does not yield to these. It triumphs over them. In all trials, it looks to Jesus and is more than conqueror in his strength. In verse 6, Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. This is a love that is never glad when others make a wrong move, an unwise step contrary to God's law of righteousness and love, which leads to their downfall. And Little writes to apply this to your opponent and your enemy. Instead, this is a love that seeks the truth, even if it means owning oneself to be in the wrong. In verse 7, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is a love that puts the best construction on everything. Even when the action, motive, and intention are all shown to be evil, love still hopes that the person will repent and the person will come back to bask in God's loving forgiveness. I was reading a little of the latest book that was written about Eric Little, uh, author Duncan Hamilton, a British journalist and sports writer, wrote For the Glory, The Life of Eric Little uh, in 2016. And this book recounts more of Eric Little's life after the Olympics as a missionary in China and his life in the Wei Qian internment camp in China. During World War II, the Japanese had taken over parts of China and foreigners were moved to concentration camps. Life wasn't easy. Wei Qian was an old Presbyterian mission compound with dilapidated buildings, with no running water, primitive toilets, 
Some 2,000 inmates were housed there, including Eric Little. And in the stress and hardship and disorganization and the chaos of it all in this concentration camp, the love of God in Eric Little's life was powerful and transforming. Duncan Hamilton writes, Little can sound too virtuous, too honorable to be true, as if those who knew him were either misremembering or consciously mythologizing. Not so. The evidence is too overwhelming to be dismissed as easily as that. No one could ever recall a single act of envy, pettiness, hubris, or self-aggrandizement from him. He badmouthed nobody. He didn't bicker. He lived daily by the most unselfish credo, which was to help others practically and emotionally. Little became the concentration camp's conscience without ever being pious, sanctimonious, or judgmental. He forced his religion on no one. He didn't expect others to share his beliefs, let alone live up to them. His heroism was to be utterly forgiving in the most unforgiving of circumstances. It sounds like someone who lived 1 Corinthians 13 in his life. And wouldn't it be amazing if we could do the same? What we need is not love from ourselves, but love from God. Excuse me here. Now the last six verses of our scripture reading speak about the eternal nature of love. Love never ends, love will remain. Love is the completion and the maturity, the fulfillment of it all. The truth is that we may find ourselves in our own, uh, in a sense, our own prison camp uh, with limitations and restrictions, with dilapidated circumstances and people around us not acting very well and with broken down relationships. But still, our goal can be the love of God and the giving, sacrificial life of Christ in us. Like this jug or pitcher that's being filled with water, refreshing mountain water, with God-given love that refreshes us and allows us to share with others. It's not filling ourselves up on our own, but with God, uh, God's glory or with Christ in us, the hope of glory. Could that happen in our lives? Only with God's help. God's love is patient and kind. It's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Let us pray. Lord, help us to know your love, your agape, your giving, unconditional, sacrificial nature that wants the very best for us. Help us to know how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Help us to live with you as our salvation and our strength, for you are love and we love because you first loved us. Lord, we pray for those who have struggles in their relationships, perhaps there's disconnection or hardness of heart or unforgiveness. Lord, please intervene. Please have mercy on us. Reveal in our hearts our own pride and stubbornness that we have been blind to. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. 
Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with weariness and sadness and those who are losing hope. Give us opportunities to reach out to people and to share your love. For those going through illness or health struggles, please bring healing into their lives according to your mercy and your grace. For those struggling to balance work and family life, give us a focus on your truth and love to guide us. Lord, we rest in your goodness to us and we give our requests to you and even release them into your care for you are our refuge and our strength and our strong tower. Thank you that we can pray in the name of Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. For offering, if you'd like to give, there's information in the notes to this video. Uh, if you do give, uh, don't feel obligated, but simply give out of appreciation and thanksgiving to God. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, you are worthy of our praise. Help us to offer ourselves to you as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to you. And please accept our offerings for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. For announcements today, uh, this week we have raised uh, funds for COVID relief for the Markham Stouffville Hospital through our Valentine's Market. So thank you to everyone who organized, prepared, served, and purchased. Special thanks to Roseanne and Mary Lou and John and everyone for your hard work. And this coming week, we are raising funds for Presbyterian World Service and Development through our Pancake Tuesday. Thomas has an announcement. Tired of doing the cooking? Let us make dinner for you this Tuesday, February 16th with our church school pancakes for pickup. For just $10, you'll get four delicious pancakes, two sausages, maple syrup, fruit, and a break from the kitchen. All of the proceeds will go to support Presbyterian World Service and Development and their work in Afghanistan supporting families who are struggling due to COVID-19. You can order pancakes online at pancakesforpickup.weebly.com. When you order, you'll also be asked to schedule a pickup time between 5 and 6 in order for us to maintain physical distancing in the parking lot. If you have any questions, feel free to contact my mom. She'll be happy to help. Thank you for your continuing support of Church School and Presbyterian World Service and Development. Bon appétit! A couple other announcements. We would normally have a prayer meeting this Tuesday, but that's going to be uh, postponed to the following Tuesday. And for the first Sunday in March, so March 7th, we're going to add a live Zoom worship service. So this will be in addition to our normal uh, YouTube service. So on March 7th, uh, you can choose between either YouTube or Zoom. And we're gonna try uh, the Zoom service once a month and it's going to start on March the 7th so if you do join that day for the zoom service uh, it'll be a little more uh, interactive and have the opportunity to fellowship before and after and we'll celebrate communion together face to face or screen to screen so more information in the weekly email let's close with Paul's prayer for the Ephesians I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. And I pray that you may have power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Our final song, Come, Let Us Sing.